western point of the Côte d'Azur lies a bejeweled hidden kingdom, a town that embodies the myth of the Riviera like no other. Saint-Tropez is famous for its ultra-chic clientele who flock here in summer to shop for designer clothes, party at exclusive beach clubs and sail about in spectacular super yachts. My travel guide promises a small fishing village true to its image. Really? Small fishing village? Where? It's certainly hard to see at first glance. I'm more worried about my credit card holding up under the pressure. As fate would have it, my visit coincides with Europe's largest Harley Davidson regatta. But these aren't your average Hells Angels. In Saint Tropez, bikers shop at Hermes and drink cafe cremes. Soon, I get it. For every street lined with exclusive designer boutiques, there's a quiet lane with traditional stores and houses. Armani's fun, but these suites look delectable. For me, Saint-Tropez is a wonderful fusion of old and new. And it's most remarkable because the new is so very new and moneyed. It makes the old world contrast even greater. Saint Torpez was a martyr. He was beheaded at Pisa during the bloody reign of Nero. His body was placed in a small boat with a rooster and a dog who were instructed to devour his remains. Fortunately, they weren't hungry. The boat landed here with the body intact and the locals were so impressed they adopted Torpez as their saint. A visit the Musée de l'Annonciade, a 16th century converted chapel dedicated to post-impressionist art. The ever-smiling curator Jean-Paul Monnery explains how Paul Signac, one of the founders of pointillism, started an artistic love affair with the town when bad weather forced him to sail into port. The rest, as they say, is art history. It's with the arrival of Paul Signac at Saint-Tropez in 1892, uh, Il est tellement fasciné par ce paysage qu'il décide, il dit, c'est la huitième merveille du monde que je découvre, je m'installe à Saint-Tropez. Et il va y rester 20 ans. Et là, sa présence à Saint-Tropez va attirer tous les autres artistes. Alors vous avez Matisse qui vient en 1904, qui va passer l'été 1904 ici. Vous avez Bonnard qui vient souvent, vous avez Camoin, vous avez Manguin. Enfin, tout, tous les artistes de Rhin, euh, tous vont passer par Saint-Tropez. So what was so special about Saint-Tropez that it became a muse for so many artists? Apparently, it's all in the light. Et surtout, ils vont découvrir cette lumière qui n'est donnée qu'à Saint-Tropez. Parce que le port ne regarde pas justement euh, le nord. Le port est, est justement, il est face au nord. Il n'est pas face à la mer, à l'est ou à l'ouest, comme tous les ports français. Et donc, vous avez une lumière du matin jusqu'au soir qui couvre comme ça le golfe de Saint-Tropez. Et cette lumière, c'est fascinant. Vous voyez euh, des couchers de soleil à Saint-Tropez, comme vous verrez sur un des tableaux de Signac. C'est vraiment extraordinaire. Et c'est vraiment la vérité. Quoi. Et donc, euh, je pense que c'est cette lumière qui a poussé les peintres donc, à venir. Et ce qui est intéressant, c'est de, euh, de voir que Saint-Tropez existait donc, dès le début du XXe siècle. Donc on n'a pas attendu justement euh, les stars, le glamour, le bling bling, etc. <laughs> Comme on dit en France. <laughs> bling bling in bling Australia bling as well. <laughs> When the artists arrived in the 19th century, Saint-Tropez was a maritime community with fishing boats and huge cargo ships moored in port. The locals were indifferent to artists or celebrities. Out on the old port, 
it's nice to know there's still some who continue to be inspired by the vista. In 1956, the film and God Created Woman launched Brigitte Bardot and Saint-Tropez to stardom. The movie left Saint-Tropez with a permanent legacy, marking the beginning of the celebrity rush to the town. The first luxury resort to go up was the Hotel Biblos. Brigitte Bardot was a regular guest and it soon became a celebrity hangout, with Mick Jagger also known to frequent its famous dance club, Le Caves de Roy. Another legacy of the film is the Saint-Tropez beach club scene. Today, there are 31 beach clubs along Pamplone's beach. But the one that started them all was the legendary Club 55. I meet with the owner, Patrice, who inherited the club from his parents and has become almost as legendary as the club itself. So Patrice, is it true you have the most popular, the most glamorous, the most star-studded beach club in the Saint-Tropez area? Oui, je pense que c'est pour moi c'est vraiment l'endroit le, le plus glamour. Ça c'est c'est certain, oui. A modest Frenchman, the very rare, <laughs> no? <laughs> I'm intrigued as to the success of this club. I know it began life as a beach shack restaurant catering to the cast and crew of *An God Created Woman* in 1955, which, incidentally, is how it got its name. So what makes this place so popular? Why has it been uh, such a, uh, you know, a bastion of, of, of stars and uh, jet set for, for such a long period of time? Dans tous les dans tous les restaurants de France, il y a deux devises. C'est ici la cuisine est faite par le patron et le client est roi. Mon père avait changé. Et ici au Club 55, c'était deux devises. C'était « Ici, le client n'est pas le roi parce qu'il est un ami. » Et « Ici, la cuisine n'est pas faite par le patron. » Alors c'est la, la philosophie de, de base qui fait que les, tous les gens qui viennent ici ne sont, pas de, ne sont pas des clients, ce sont des amis. I've heard Patrice is a terrifically hard worker. Seven days a week. All year round. Wait, wait, yeah? Is that, it's true? Oui. You, you work hard, yeah? No. Is that the secret? <laughs> no, it's not true. <laughs> no. Être au Club 55, pour moi, chaque jour, c'est un jeu. It's a game. It's a game. Voilà. Donc, c'est très facile d'être là tous les jours, 7 jours sur 7. Parce que c'est pas du travail, c'est un, un jeu. Chaque jour, il y a des rencontres extraordinaires avec des, des gens qui sont. Chaque jour, des gens différents, avec beaucoup de caractère, etc. Donc, c'est pas du tout un travail. Je ne, je ne pourrais absolument pas être 7 jours sur 7 dans un bureau à travailler. Ça, c'est du travail pour moi. Mais ici, c'est quand même, regardez. Ouais. C'est quand même... Oui. C'est pas du travail. Yeah. Hein? Oui. Hein? <laughs> it's a hard job. I think we should swap jobs. You come to Australia, okay. <laughs> and I'll come okay. here. <laughs> Careful, Patrice. I may well hold you to that. <laughs>